Yeah, so hello and welcome to the ninth lecture of group theory after such a long time. Uh, in between we had a almost couple of months break and we have also discussed, uh, we have also had two lectures in the Google Meet before this uh, video lecture. So this will be a part of, this will be same repetition of what we have uh, already seen in the last two Google Meets. So let me start uh, with the last topic of the unit one last section which is homomorphism of group so this homomorphisms so what is a homomorphism in any algebraic structure a homomorphism is a map uh, which preserves the operation of that algebraic structure for example if we have uh, groups, a group homomorphism preserves the operation of group. If we have vector spaces, it, a vector space uh, homomorphism is, is a map which preserves the operations of vector space that is addition and scalar multiplication. In case of ring, uh, addition and multiplication. So for group, uh, let's uh, let uh, g n and g bar be two groups. Suppose in G and G bar are two groups, a mapping, a function, let us denote by phi, phi from G to G bar is said to be a homomorphism if this condition is satisfied that phi preserves the operation of group so phi a b equals to phi a phi b for all a b in g not just one pair but for all a b in g if uh, this condition is satisfied phi a b equals to phi a phi b then uh, we say that phi is a homomorphism of group g to g bar now remember this a b here this is a uh, operation in g and here this one this is operation in this is operation in g bar right so a b are elements of g so this actually we write a b only it is we denote this as product but a b means a star b whatever the star is a binary operation of g and phi a phi b means phi a dot phi b the dot is a binary operation in g bar okay. so now uh, let us consider some examples so first example easiest one take uh, any group G then the identity map from G to G is homomorphism so let G be any group all these examples we have already discussed in the Google meet I'm just going through it once again let G be any group then the map phi from G to G defined by phi of x equals to x for all x in g is a homomorphism uh, and I ask you to verify all these uh, examples I'm, not, I'm just treating them as exam examples I ask you to verify uh, that they are actually homomorphisms and what we are also going to observe here is uh, three things whether it is 1 1 or not whether it is on 2 or not and uh, so 1 1 and on 2 and then image of identity and what is the image of inverse of an element so I'm going to list those things uh, first of all yes this is uh, 1 1 it is also on 2 so it is 1 1 and on 2 what is phi of e phi of e is e, phi of x is x here 
and phi of uh, x inverse is x inverse which is nothing but uh, phi of e is e and this is uh, because x I can write as phi of x so it is nothing but since x equals to phi of x so x inverse is nothing but phi of x inverse so these three things we are noticing along with uh, considering the example similarly if g and g dash uh, g and g bar are two groups then between any two groups so let so similarly let uh, g and g bar be any groups if g and g bar are any groups then the map phi from g to g bar defined by phi of x equals to e bar is a homomorphism so this is also homomorphism where e bar is what e bar is the identity of g bar so this is a homomorphism will it be one one will it be on two well not always if g bar is singleton identity then it will be on two otherwise it is not on two and if g is not singleton then it is not one one because if g has more than one element all elements are going there so it is uh, i can write it is not one one and not on two but it is a homomorphism and what we are noticing here what is phi of e phi of e is e bar phi of x is also e bar for any x and phi of x inverse is also e bar which is same as phi of x inverse okay so uh, this is called uh, it is called trivial homomorphism so this is called it is called trivial homomorphism and so next example example number two let us consider so in between the same groups so let g uh, as we have taken here identity from g to g but if we fix the group same uh, then other than identity also there are homomorphism for example this one uh, let g equals to z and this is a group we have seen this is a group under addition right so and define phi from g to g that means z to z by phi of x equals to 2x for all x in g then verify that phi is a homomorphism Right, this is homomorphism and is it 1 1 so it is uh, it is 1 1 but it is not on 2 because uh, only even integers are in the range so it is uh, 1 1 but it is not on 2 and what about uh, phi of e phi of e so e is here what identity is uh, identity is 0 here so that is 2 times 0 so that is 0 so 0 is again identity of z uh, phi of x equals to 2x phi of x inverse x inverse is uh, minus x here because z is a group under addition right so phi of x is minus x and minus x is what 2 times minus x this is minus 2x Right. and this is as you can see this is minus phi of x phi of x is 2x so this is minus phi of x additive group so phi of inverse of x that is minus x that is same as minus phi of x so that is inverse that is what our observation is um, yes in the google meet uh, amit has also given a similar example probably he was amit i think uh, what example he has given same same one uh, consider another example uh, 
so define phi from g to g again uh, g equals to z with addition uh, by phi of x equals to minus x here defined inverse for all x in g and this is also a homomorphism right and uh, what what about 1 1 and 1 2 so it is just inverse of each other so this map is uh, 1 1 it is also on 2 the first one was not on 2 this is 1 1 and on 2 so when we consider so many examples we come across all those homomorphisms which are 1 1 which are not 1 1 which are on 2 which are not on 2 so whenever we want to give a particular example counter example uh, practicing a lot of examples verifying a lot of examples thinking about uh, them those these examples would actually help so this is 1 1 and on 2 in this case what is phi of 0 phi of 0 is 0 which is again identity phi of x is uh, minus x and what about phi of minus x phi of minus x is minus of minus x which is x right so which is nothing but minus phi of x right so these are two very easy examples and the third example which we had given in the class is uh, so this was g to g g to g one example we have seen any group g identity map is always phi of x equals to x is always a homomorphism and if we take a particular group like z with under addition then we have phi of x equals to minus x that is a homomorphism which is other different from identity we have a homomorphism phi of x equals to 2x which is 1 1 but not 1 2 and that is also uh, another homomorphism different from identity and so that was g to g and then g to g bar any two groups uh, we define like this phi of x equals to e bar identity of g bar that is trivial homomorphism that is always the case so that is trivial homomorphism and the next uh, example we consider uh, group with different operation groups so let this was the example which we had considered in the google meet r under addition and uh, g bar g bar we had taken r star so this is same as uh, we also denoted by r star non zero reals and uh, the operation in here we know it is under multiplication right and define phi from g to g bar by phi of x equals to 2 raised to x then phi is a homomorphism what is uh, phi of uh, we are considering r with addition right r under addition so we take two elements we are taking a plus b as i said whatever a b was there it was not actually product but it was a a star b where star is a binary operation of g but here the operation is uh, addition and so we take a plus b and so that is nothing but 2 raised to a plus b which is 2 raised to a 2 raised to b and so 2 raised to a is nothing but phi of a and this is phi of b and here you can see that this is product so this is the product uh, because r that is operation in g bar r star under multiplication so thus uh, this is true for all a b in g and thus phi is it is a homomorphism Is it 1 1 2 raised to a equals to 2 raised to b or 2 raised to a equals to yes so 2 raised to b then we must have a equals to b so this will be a 1 1 homomorphism is it on to it is not going to be on to homomorphism because uh, there are no negative integers here right take any x 5 of 2 raised to x 
if x is positive 2 raised to x is positive x, x is 0 2 raised to 2 x is 1 that is again positive if x is negative x is say let us say x is minus 1 so 2 raised to minus 1 is 1 upon 2 raised to 1 1 by 2 that is again positive so negative integer also x is there then 1 upon 2 raised to minus x which is again going to be positive so it does not take any negative real numbers so if we take r star then negative numbers are not uh, in the image so it is not on to this we have seen in the google meet so this is not on to and uh, we are also observing what is uh, phi of e so phi of e e here means identity of r with addition which is zero and it is nothing but two raised to zero which is one and you can say that this is identity of r star with uh, multiplication right this is identity of r star with multiplication and phi of uh, x this is 2 raised to x what about phi of uh, x inverse x inverse that is minus x because here we have an additive group so 2 raised to minus x and this is 1 upon 2 raised to x 1 upon 2 raised to x is nothing but uh, uh, it is 1 upon phi of x see uh, and 2 raised to x is never 0 right so and as you can see phi of x is 2 raised to x so phi of x into 1 upon phi x so this is nothing but it is inverse of phi of x so phi of minus x is inverse of phi of x here in r star okay so that uh, we have considered two groups with uh, two different operations on the domain we have addition and on the uh, range codomain we have uh, multiplication okay so this is was example number three and so now four and this is another standard example uh, we considered this many many times so e phi psi psi square s3 we know s this is s3 and then phi psi and psi phi so this is the s3 group we know phi is of ele element of order 2 this psi psi square they are elements of order 3 and we have seen this in detail uh, earlier so notice that every element of this can be written as phi power i psi power j for example this i can write as phi power 0 psi power 0 this i can write as uh, phi power 1 psi power 0 psi can be written as phi power 0 psi power 1 psi square can be written as phi power 0 psi power 1 this can be written as phi power 1 psi power 1 or here it is uh, psi power 2 yes and uh, psi phi we know that is phi psi square so this is phi psi square so every element of s3 can be written as phi power i psi power j i and j are greater than equals to 0 so now we define a map and okay and g bar g bar equals to so take g equals to s3 and g bar equals to e phi so let me write like this e phi which is nothing but the cyclic group of order 2 generated by phi phi and phi square is identity so g bar is this and now define f from g to g bar by f any element of g i have to write here so that element of g can be written as phi power i psi power j and we ignore whatever the psi power is there so we write this as phi power i right and then uh, we have to verify that that is uh, how f is defined that is in fact f is defined like this so f uh, we have phi sorry we have e and then phi psi psi square phi psi and psi phi so e is mapped to e phi is mapped to phi psi is mapped to again e because there is no psi phi power zero so here also phi power zero in psi square so that is also mapped to e here there is phi power one so it is phi 
psi phi also phi power 1 psi square psi square is ignored and so this is map to phi okay so this is how uh, f is defined and then f is homomorphism so we verify i ask you to verify that f is f is a homomorphism and what about 1 1 it is uh, not 1 1 as you can see there are three elements going to e and three elements going to phi so it is not 1 1 and clearly it is on 2 why it is on 2 because uh, g bar we have taken e and phi and both are there in the image so it is on 2 and uh, phi of f of e f of e is identity again and uh, you can check about the inverse also for each element here it is difficult to uh, write in general right so this was uh, the example of s3 we had seen s3 to s3 same group now let us consider an example so this was example number four so now we have five we consider an example of uh, an infinite group and uh, the range is is of a finite group so g equals to uh, we take r star so that is r minus 0 under multiplication and uh, g bar g bar is uh, minus 1 1 this is also a group under multiplication this is also a group under multiplication minus 1 1 1 is the identity element and um, minus 1 inverse is again minus 1 and we define phi from g to g bar by phi of uh, x we are taking so it's minus 1 if uh, x is positive if x is negative we are defining it on the fact that uh, multiplication of two negative number is again a positive number so here we are taking minus 1 because minus 1 into minus 1 is 1 so negative number we are just taking the sign so minus sign so we take it minus 1 and for positive number we take it the sign is plus so plus 1 so if x is positive right so then uh, this is then phi is a homomorphism again what about 1 1 and on 2 so it is uh, not 1 1 uh, it is on 2 because positive numbers will take 1 negative numbers will take minus 1 so it is uh, on 2 uh, what about the identity element r star with multiplication the identity element is 1 and phi of 1 1 is positive so image is 1 which is identity of this so this is you can say that this is identity of g bar minus 1 1 and uh, phi of x and minus x that you can see check uh, this one can be verified we have to consider two cases here but phi of x equals to uh, phi of sorry phi of x inverse x inverse equals to this Right, so this example we have considered then next was uh, yeah there was one suggestion in the google meet uh, about considering odd and even here but uh, that is based on the fact that when we add two odd numbers we get an even number so when we here multiply minus one minus one we get one so odd numbers is uh, this odd minus one when odd and one when x is even that will work when we consider addition because when we multiply two odd numbers it is going to be again an odd number 
so it is not going to work there so if we consider r with addition uh, so this is another example in this uh, very similar example consider g equals to r under addition and g bar equals to 1 minus 1 same as above and define like this g to g bar by phi of x equals to uh, minus 1 1 minus 1 if uh, x is odd and 1 if uh, x is even so now here this in g bar there is multiplication but in, in r there is addition so when we have one odd number the image is minus one another odd number the image is minus one here we add two odd numbers we get an even number so image will be one and on the other hand their images are multiplied because it is multiplicative group g bar so minus one times minus one which is one so this also will work but then you have to modify this here we had consider r star with multiplication here we have r with addition okay so this was example number five uh, example number six this already maybe you have studied this in BSC uh, we consider G equals to Z by Z this uh, additive group of integers under addition and G bar G n bar G n bar equals to we take Z n so the group of integers under addition modulo n So this is group of uh, integers under addition modulo n. Right? Define uh, phi from phi x. So define phi from g to g bar by phi x. It is uh, nothing but we write like this x mod n. So that is uh, remainder obtained remainder of x remainder of x on division by n remainder obtained by dividing x by n so this is also uh, then phi is also a homomorphism then phi is a homomorphism Uh, I made a mistake yeah then phi is a homomorphism uh, is it uh, 1 1 no it is not 1 1 but it is uh, on 2 as you can check not 1 1 and uh, phi of 0 this is 0 bar 0 bar is uh, in, in zn right and uh, phi of x what is phi of minus x uh, so phi of x so here additive group is there so phi of minus x is nothing but uh, minus x bar minus x bar so minus x bar is nothing but uh, minus of x mod n right so one more example a couple of more examples uh, which we have seen so this is number seven uh, let j be a the group of uh, positive reals r plus or uh, we also sometimes denote by r greater than zero it is a group of positive reals under multiplication instead of taking r star we are taking r plus so not only zero is neglected negative numbers are also in neglected we are considering only positive reals and uh, the operation is multiplication and g bar g bar is uh, r with addition r under addition is just opposite of uh, what we had seen in here 2 raised to 
A. So this was R under addition was G and R star we had taken and we have seen this function is not on to y because it was not taking negative integers. So if we want a and b, so we take log. So this is here what exactly where we define. So we take uh, positive because log is defined on that. So positive reals with uh, under multiplication and define pi from g to g bar by pi of x equals to log of x to the base 10 right then phi is a homomorphism as you can verify by the properties of log then phi is a homomorphism and what is phi of e phi of e identity of r star so r star identity is r, r is not r star r plus positive reals identity is one multiplication here so 1 and then it is log 1 which is 0 which is uh, identity of g bar which is r with addition right so this is the identity and phi of x equals to log x what is phi of minus x uh, not minus x it is uh, r plus under multiplication so x no inverse inverse of x is 1 upon x so that is uh, log 1 upon x which is same as uh, log 1 minus log x which is 0 minus log x which is minus log x which is minus phi of x see r with uh, g bar is r with addition so this is log x phi x is log x and uh, phi of 1 upon x x no inverse that is minus phi of x so that is additive inverse of this yeah um, so is it 1 1 it is 1 1 and uh, what about on to check whether it is 1 1 and on to or no and the last example which we had considered was the set of all two cross two real matrices H. So let uh, G equals to GL2R, uh, the set of two cross two real matrices, uh, invertible matrices GL2R, two cross two matrices with real entries which are invertible, that is, determinant is non zero, and uh, this is under usual matrix multiplication. So this is a group under matrix multiplication and uh, let g bar g bar equals to uh, r star which is again r minus 0 under multiplication Right. So this is uh, R star non-zero reals under multiplication and define phi from G to G bar by. So here uh, it is uh, 2 cross 2 matrices, invertible matrices. So we denote uh, it by some good notation. Let us say capital A where A is a matrix. So phi of A and this is defined by determinant of A. By the property of determinant, you can check that this is a homomorphism because phi of a b will be determinant a b, but we know determinant a b is same as determinant a determinant b. So this is uh, then phi is a homomorphism. You can check that this will be on to, and whether it is one one or not, check that it is not one one. Two, two determinants, two matrices may have same determinant and it is on to because we have considered R star. So this is uh, an on to function and it's a homomorphism. So this much uh, we had seen and from okay then one more thing which we are observing. So this is uh, on to and what is phi of uh, I identity matrix. And that is one right so this is uh, identity of r star 
and phi of a is determinant of a what is uh, sorry what is phi of a inverse phi of a inverse is determinant of a inverse here a inverse we can take because we know we have taken the group gl2r invertible matrices so this is nothing but one upon determinant of a and r star g bar is r star which is under multiplication it is a group and as you can see that is determinant of a phi of a and then phi of a inverse is nothing but one upon determinant of a so it is uh, inverse of multiplicative inverse of determinant of a so this is nothing but uh, one upon phi of a so from all these examples what we have examples we have seen what we observe and yeah of course it is uh, not one so from all these examples what we have seen is what we have observed is this so let uh, g and g bar be two groups and phi from g to g bar be a homomorphism then we have observed two things first one is uh, phi of e is e bar second phi of x inverse is uh, inverse of phi of x this is these are the two things uh, that we have observed and i ask you to prove these two things but here i'll give you the proof it was an easy exercise when lecture was ending so i ask you to do it yourself so first one we want to show that uh, phi of e equals to e bar and what we are given is uh, that uh, phi is a homomorphism so we have to use anything from the data only it comes so we have to use the fact that uh, phi is a homomorphism so we have to use the property of homomorphism uh, so which we know it preserves operation so multiplication of two elements and one element we have to make it e so either we can take like this e e equals to e and this implies phi of uh, e e equals to phi of e and this implies because it is homomorphism phi of e phi of e equals to phi of e and uh, cancel phi of e in g bar cancellation law so phi of e equals to e bar or we can take x uh, e equals to x for any x so this is uh, another way and uh, same thing apply phi phi of x e equals to phi of uh, x and uh, use the fact that phi is homomorphism phi of x phi of e equals to phi of x and again use cancellation law phi of x is an element of g bar and g bar is a group so multiply by phi of x inverse so phi of e equals to e bar so any of these two uh, arguments you can give and what about the second one second one we have to show that see whenever we want to show that y equals to x inverse how do we show that y equals to x inverse y is called inverse of x if x into y is identity equals to y into x if you show this then uh, then y equals to x inverse this is how we write so phi of x inverse equals to phi x inverse that means multiply this two and we should get identity so phi of x inverse and phi of x this is equals to because phi is homomorphism x inverse x and the reason is since phi is homomorphism and what is phi of x inverse x x inverse x is identity in the group g and what is phi of e it is nothing but e bar uh, this is by one by above just we have proved phi of e equals to e bar so phi of x inverse phi of x equals to e bar so this implies thus phi of x inverse it is nothing but this is inverse of phi of x right so very simple proof that is why i have given this for exercise and uh, as you can see now it is very easy so this was uh, the first observation which we have seen now coming to the point 
uh, when we define kernel of homomorphism. So this is also a revision part. We have already studied this in BSE, kernel of homomorphism. We know what is a kernel. So if uh, G and G, G bar are two groups and if phi is a uh, phi from G to G bar is a homomorphism. Uh, then the kernel of phi the kernel of phi is uh, denoted by in the book it is denoted by like this k phi but we use this notation because this is much more standard notation which we are familiar with and this is widely used curve phi so kernel of phi is denoted by this and defined as and defined by kernel of phi actually it is uh, the subset of the domain kernel of phi equals to all x in g such that phi of x equals to e bar where e bar is we know it is identity of g bar all those uh, elements which are mapped to identity that is uh, that set collection of all those elements that set is called the kernel and now what we know about uh, you can for your practice you can go to the all the examples we have seen above and try to find the kernel of all those homomorphism right and uh, what lemma which we already discussed there uh, which in now we, in the video i give as exercise because i already i uh, had explained i had given the proof of this in my video the google meet so in this video i i skip this as uh, an exercise for you to practice without looking at the book you can try to uh, prove this so uh, let g and g be two groups g and g bar sorry let g and g bar be two groups and uh, phi from g to g bar be a homomorphism then the very easy exercise is uh, we have to show that kernel of phi is uh, it is a, not only a subgroup but it is a normal subgroup of of g so then kernel of phi is a normal subgroup of G. Proof, I can give it easily now itself, but uh, I've given in the Google Meet, I think I proved this. So I would like to, uh, for your practice, I would like to give you as exercise. I've already uh, included the proof in the lecture notes, typed lecture notes, which I'm going to give you uh, very soon. So in that notes uh, already I have typed, so you can verify whether your proof is correct or not. But I uh, strongly recommend, strongly suggest you to uh, do it on your own. It's very easy exercise, normal subgroup also you know. So kernel of homomorphism is always a normal subgroup of the domain group. Okay, so that uh, part we have seen, kernel is a normal subgroup. And now we give... Uh, more example of uh, homomorphism this is a very general example so quotient group we have studied so let g be a group and n be a normal subgroup If you feel that I am going too fast, then you can pause the video and 
go go through it again and again since it is a video so i am going very quickly and this is uh, although i know it is uh, viewing this video independently will appear to be faster but because we have already seen this content in the google meet so i think uh, this space is good enough so g is a group and suppose n is a normal subgroup then we have a canonical homomorphism so we define natural homomorphism from group to a quotient group quotient by a normal subgroup you know whenever n is if and only if n is a subgroup of normal subgroup then g quotient n is uh, if and only if g quotient n is a group so define phi from g to g quotient n by phi of uh, x so if i take x in g right so if i take the this x in g then how do i define phi of x we want an element of g quotient n elements of g quotient n we know they are uh, they are what they are cosets n is normal subgroup so right coset is same as left coset so i can write it either xn or nx it is one and the same thing right uh, so this is nx x belongs to g then what we have to prove then we have to show that phi is uh, a homomorphism of uh, g onto g quotient n so it's not just homomorphism it is also onto homomorphism so let us prove this right so first onto is very clear so onto is clear why it is clear so i am i am writing also why it is clear because uh, for onto what we do we take uh, any element in this uh, codomain so let x belongs to g quotient n so x belongs to g quotient n what are the elements of g quotient n quotient group they are cosets so x is a coset coset of uh, n in g and coset of n in g are how do they look like they look like nx ny for some element x or y so so then uh, we can write then x equals to let us say ny for some y in g this is how coset look like right coset or left coset because it is normal it is it is the same so for some y in g but as soon as we get y see this how it is defined this homomorphism so we get uh, the element we are looking for for every element x here we get an element y such that phi of x equals to, phi of y equals to x so also and and phi of y equals to ny equals to x so this is where we started with we choose choose an x we have chosen an x in g quotient n and we got uh, its pre image so phi of y equals to x so this is on two part is clear uh, just go slowly slowly once again and i hope it is clear to you so one two part is clear and homomorphism is just uh, the definition of uh, quotient group product binary operation pro, pro, product uh, i mean the binary operation in the quotient group so also for any x y in g if i take any two elements what is phi of x y phi of x y it is defined as the right coset of n in g with respect to xy nxy but that nxy is this is how the product is defined in the quotient group quotient group ma product so how how the product is defined in the quotient group quotients that means uh, the elements are cosets two cosets right cosets we have seen this is this they can be multiplied like this and so this is clearly a homomorphism because this is phi x phi y so thus uh, phi is a homomorphism of uh, g onto g dash so then thus phi is homomorphism so it is homomorphism and it is onto and so this result is uh, very very important why it is important not because it is going to be asking exam but it is important because for every normal subgroup we can find a homomorphism and this homomorphism is called uh, canonical homomorphism so 
So this homomorphism defined like this is called because it is called natural homomorphism. So the word is uh, often used here is it's called canonical. So if we have a normal subgroup, we can take a canonical homomorphism from G to G quotient n defined by phi of x equals to nx. You have another uh, normal subgroup n2, take G to G quotient n2, phi of x equals to n2x. So as many as normal subgroups we have, we can define uh, such a homomorphism. So it is very uh, significant result. Okay, so after that, uh, and of course, what is the kernel of this? This is one additional thing which is uh, not asked in Hurstein. Only this much is given. But uh, we also find, so uh, let us write it, this as a note or a remark. Uh, so what is kernel of phi? Kernel of phi is by definition, all x belongs to G. All x in G, such that uh, phi of x equals to identity. Identity of this. What is the identity of G quotient n cosets n x n y? So any identity so that n e, n e is n. So this is nothing but this is n e, which is n. And so this is identity of G quotient n. This is the definition. Right? We, have not, we have done nothing but we have just written the definition and now we are going to find what is the kernel of this. So this is all x belongs to G such that what is phi of x? It is defined as uh, nx. So phi of x is nx. So nx equals to uh, n. And when nx equals to n, when is this the identity quotient? If and only if x belongs to n. So this is all those x in G such that x belongs to n. N is a subgroup. So this is nothing but this is N. So kernel of phi is N. So additional thing what we have got is uh, kernel of phi is N. So this, uh, what is the kernel of uh, this canonical homomorphism? This is the normal subgroup which we have started with using which the homomorphism is defined. Yes. Uh, okay, now uh, what we are interested in, in a question which I had posed earlier also. So suppose we have a group G and we have a group G bar and what we are interested in in the inverse image of elements of G bar. What do we mean by inverse element? So if I take an element G bar, what do we mean? What do we mean by inverse element? So there is a map phi already we know from G to G bar. This is a homomorphism. So phi is a homomorphism from G to G bar. What do we mean by inverse uh, image of G bar? It is the element X in G whose image is G bar. So, if phi of x equals to g bar, then phi of x equals to g bar, then x is called the inverse image of g bar, right? the pre-image or the inverse image of g bar inverse image character by x net phi of x jo g bar out way then x is called the inverse image of g bar so g bar is called the image of x because phi of x equals to phi maps x to g bar phi of x equals to g bar and x is called the inverse image of g bar so g bar is image of x and x is called inverse image of g bar so now uh, suppose we take identity element here instead of g bar we take e bar and what is the inverse image so inverse image is this set all the elements of this set will be mapped to identity all elements of this set only will be mapped to identity and you know what is this set 
all those x so this is the set inverse image of e bar is this set all those x in g such that phi of x equals to e bar inverse image of e bar means those who, those elements whose image is e bar so that that is how inverse image is defined so this is nothing but uh, by the definition this is nothing but kernel of phi so we know this is kernel of phi right so this is kernel of phi so that is in particular about e bar but what if we take general element here g bar what about g bar so the question is how do we find inverse image of g bar so here we know it is kernel kernel we know how to find the kernel when we are given homomorphism but how to find inverse image of uh, g bar and the thing is we cannot find uh, any particular arbitrary element we cannot find the inverse image easily but if we know one element then uh, it is very clear what is the inverse image so if we know one inverse image suppose we find out x is the inverse image of g bar that means phi of x equals to g bar then we can find all the inverse images by this lemma and uh, the lemma i am stating is this is here so if phi is a homomorphism phi is a homomorphism of uh, g onto g bar why we are using onto g bar because otherwise uh, some elements need not have inverse image also onto function nahi lete agar hai na to kuch elements honge jiske koi inverse image honge nahi there are no ele elements which are mapped to that element because if it is not an onto function range is not uh, same as uh, the codomain so here we are assuming the function is onto and with kernel k with kernel k then the set of all the set of all inverse images the set of all inverse images of g bar some element arbitrary element g bar in g bar uh, under phi inverse image under phi is given by kx where k is the kernel but what is x where x is any particular the x is any particular inverse image of g bar in g so phi is a homomorphism of g to g bar like this and what are the inverse images of g bar all those elements kx it is a set kx so this is kernel so this is k but uh, here it is kx we need to find one x whose which, which is the inverse image of g bar so phi of x equals to g bar how ek x mali jaye phi of x if this is g bar at least one we can find out so where x is any inverse image of g bar then this is nothing but inverse image of g bar is nothing but kx where x is particular inverse image of g bar so phi of x equals to g bar aisa ek element agar mil gaya then uh, we are done we can find the kernel and we can find this coset kx and that is the inverse image of uh, jiba now uh, hiralal had asked for uh, an example so i i'll give you an example here so let us consider an example which uh, we had taken uh, about example of homomorphism uh, which was s3 let us take that that one yes this example number 4 uh, i told i will give you the example in the next class but in the next class i may cover the further topic 
So I am giving the example in the video. If time will be there, I will repeat this example in the next class. But meanwhile, I am just giving the example here itself. कि ऐसा कोई example कि ऐसे जैसे ये result समझ में आए. So this is the example. So let us write this homomorphism, and then we'll find out, right? So what is this homomorphism? I'm just going to write it at the bottom where we stop. So f of phi power i psi power j equals to phi power i in S3. Psi power j ko ignore karo. Whatever phi phi power is there, that is the image. So I'm writing the homomorphism here, uh, which is this. So f and we have e phi psi. We have psi square, phi psi, and psi phi. E was mapped to E, phi was mapped to phi. Psi is me koi phi ka power nahi hai, so psi is mapped to E. Psi square is also mapped to E. Phi psi is mapped to phi because phi power one is there. Psi phi, psi phi we can write as phi psi square, so phi power one. So this is also phi. So what is the kernel here? The kernel of uh, phi. Kya elements E ma jaye chhe. So the image of E here, the kernel is E psi and psi square. E psi psi square. So kernel is this cyclic group generated by psi. Right. So kernel we know, and this is K. So this is uh, the example. So K we know. Now we want to find inverse image of what is G bar here. G bar is uh, so G bar equals to. There are only two elements here. G bar E and phi. E inverse image to kernel theory that is K. So we want to find inverse image of phi. Example must be clear, sir. But how do we find using K? So what is inverse image of phi? What is inverse image of phi? So find one inverse image of phi. So x equals to phi because phi of x. Oh, sorry, f of x is this phi. F of x is f of phi, and f of phi phi is. So inverse image f of x equals to f of phi because x equals to phi, and one uh, mali gyu apne. So this is our x. One inverse image mali jaye, so baki badu mali jaise kya hi to mal se. So inverse image of phi, this is uh, same as k x. So this is nothing but k phi, and k is this. This is our k. So k phi. So I need phi sath multiply karo. So what is e phi? E phi is phi, psi phi, psi phi, and psi square phi. What is psi square phi? So either I write psi square phi or I can write as uh, phi psi. And you can see these are the three. Phi no, ek to phi I will give. X certainly e x. Then next is phi psi, psi phi, and phi psi. So they are the inverse images of phi. So this is an example. Another example also you can try yourself, uh, but I think uh, this would explain. And go through the video before uh, joining the next uh, meeting. So if you have any doubt, we can discuss this. Another example you can take additive group uh, Z mod phi Z. Uh, take that homomorphism G to G and which we have seen Z mod N Z. Any homomorphism and then take uh, inverse image. Hello, my minus one one bar open by Sakai. Uh, take all this. Uh, now the topic is uh, on isomorphism, which is uh, again uh, very little. But I think uh, I will stop uh, here because the video is all already. I have spent more than one hour, so the video may be uh, quite longer. So that isomorphism part is uh, very much less. We have just defined what is isomorphism. And then first isomorphism theorem, of course, that hint I had given, and it was an exercise which will be given in assignment, which we already studied in BSc. 
so this part is a revision whatever the revision part is there i'm just giving you as exercise uh, so that you get uh, the practice also revision also of whatever you are studying and whatever the new part is there in this unit that we have already covered very slowly so i'll send the next video very very soon and uh, please watch this video i know it is time taking but uh, you can skip the part which you feel that uh, is easy so i stop here thank you